my name is Julian Camarena. And I'm Adrian Camarena, and we're joined today with Tanya Estrada, who is a musician, actor, and stand-up comedian. It's very nice having you today. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me today. Thank you. How's your day going so far? Everything's good. Everything's good. Can't complain. Yeah? Yeah. So what, what is a normal day for you like? Um, well, usually I wake up, you know, with my butler making me my coffee. Mm, nice. And then, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, normal day for me. You know what? Normal day for me in Los Angeles, you know, we got to hustle. And I think, like, the first thing that a lot of us in entertainment do is we got to get up and go to the gym. So I don't really do that. <laughs> I usually put on like gym clothes so that way I feel, feel like, like I'm gonna go to the gym, like but, go to the gym but I don't actually go to the gym. I mean, so. that's just good. You're halfway there. Yeah. I'm halfway there. It's yeah. all in the mindset. It's, it's all in the mindset. mindset. <laughs> um, you know, every morning it's different. I definitely, one of the first things is I try to go work out, but usually the morning time is phone calls, meetings. Uh, I really love that we have FaceTime now where we can have. Yes, meetings. he likes to see the other people's faces. I love to see other people's faces. I do. I love to be able to communicate with people over FaceTime because you may not have time to drive there and get, get there to see uh, people, but over FaceTime, it's like you're right there and you can get a lot done. Yeah. I always try to FaceTime people, but no one wants to FaceTime me back. You know, it's, it's so weird. Now, nowadays, like, people are weird about phone calls, weird about FaceTime. Like, it's all text message nowadays. Yeah, it is. it's the it, weirdest thing. And it's weird, like, especially with, like, social media. Like, I asked a girl one time, I said, hey, because I like girls. And, <laughs> and and I asked her, I'm like, so, uh, you know, I'm talking it up, and she seems like she's into me. And, and she's, and, and I asked her, so, uh, can I get your phone number? And she's like, no, but you can have my Instagram. <laughs> Which is kind of weird, because, I mean, you think a uh, phone number, you can, you know, you can text, you can call, and if you're really kinky, FaceTime. You know, but like Instagram, you can pretty much do all that and see what they're doing every single day of their life. So it, it's weird, yet it's still impersonal. Well, don't consider it impersonal. I mean, I think right now with things going on like Dirty John, you know, I mean, everybody's watched Dirty John and what's going on with Dirty John. Uh, women have to be a lot more careful with who they give their phone number to because, see, the thing with, with social media is you have a filter of who you want to talk to and who you don't want to talk to. But if you give them your phone number, true, like, now you can track down where this person is. You can put a locator on people's phones. Like, you, you got to be more careful. And for me, too, like, if I just meet someone, I personally just want to talk on Messenger because yeah. I don't want my phone blowing up all the time. But can, but, but can you track people too on, on, on Instagram, I thought? I'm not sure. No, not so much. I mean, unless they, unless they like actually post where they are. I mean, yeah. They're not going to know. I mean, some people have always post their location like on Snapchat or Instagram. They say, oh, I'm at this place, I'm at this place, I'm at this place. So, I mean, technically you could probably figure out where they are, but... But, but that's uh, cool, you're trying to date? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is... He's trying. I'm trying. Not successfully, but I'm trying. Aww, but the fact that you're trying shows that you're hitting puberty. <laughs> do, you have any, do you have any tips, man? <laughs> uh, tips? You know, uh, I saw the way that you dress up when you show up somewhere. That's very polite. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Adrian show up to some place, but dude, talk about an ascot on a 20 year old. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but you are so adorable. Like for a second, I was like, I'd hit that. But I was like, would I go to jail? So I was like, nah. I was wearing that. Uh, that red suit, yeah. Yeah. So no, that's very polite. Showing up dressed up is very important because I don't know what's up with some of you guys out there right now, specifically the hipsters and vegans. Okay. <laughs> you guys just roll out of bed, you know, in your sweatpants and your hoodies. <laughs> You know what I mean? Maybe throw a little mocos in your beard and you think you're good to go. That's gross. <laughs> like, all you guys are gross out there. I don't know what's up with that. But you so, yeah, so dress you're, you're like a man. Yeah, you have to get start dressing good. Because girls do pay attention to how you dress and how you look. They, they do. So you're you're originally from Los Angeles. <laughs> you grew up here? Yes, I was born in Los Angeles. So when, when did you decide that you wanted to get into, into comedy? I was, uh, actually, I was seven years old. I was seven years old and um, I grew up in a... a Spanish speaking household so I only watched Spanish speaking like movies and TV shows and then I discovered uh, Channel 11 yeah. and Channel 9 and they started having these comedy shows late at night and I was just like that's what I want to do like so I knew. what were some what were some of the Latino comics that you watched 
growing up? Um, well, Paul Rodriguez, of course, George Lopez, uh, but also Wendy Liebman. I love Wendy Liebman, and I loved a lot of the BET comics like Shang and Earthquake. Um, and it's just, it's so weird that years later, all these years later, like I'm working with all these names now. So it's kind of just a weird, just... Yeah, it's cool when it comes full circle. When it comes yeah. full circle, yeah. And that, and the waking up every morning to know that my name is attached to being a comedian, yeah. like, makes me so happy. Like, I love making people laugh. I also <laughs> heard you, you were a big fan of, uh, how do you say, Weird Al Yankovic. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, I love him too. I love Weird Al Yankovic, like, there's nothing else. Like, if there was one person I would geek out over meeting again, it's Weird Al Yankovic. I met him one time before, years ago, um, at a party, and it was potluck, so I brought my vegan red velvet cupcakes. And he was there and he apparently was vegan and he ate them and he said, these are the most delicious vegan cupcakes. And they were red velvet. For all you guys that remember my vegan red velvet, it was the bomb. And I was like, oh my God, can I have a picture? And it's just like one of the happiest moments of I my think, life. I think Weird a genius. I mean, he's like the, he's like the king of the, the parody songs. Well, yeah, I love his "Is Eat It" song in the. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm bumping in the car right now. Oh, really? bump, I was bumping Weird Al Yankovic, uh, "Dare to Be Stupid." Um, what is it? Uh, "Living like with a Hernia." Have you ever done any any parody like songs? Yeah. That's that's actually what I'm working on right now. Yeah, is is my dream? My fulfillment to my dream is to be the female Weird Al Yankovic, the Latina female Weird Al Yankovic, and I've been working really hard on my album. Uh, I'm five songs recorded. Uh, on, on it and I could release it as an EP. I'm thinking about it, but I'm thinking about just adding just a few more and making it a yeah, full album. A bomb, yeah. And then and then also too, but before I release the, the singles, yeah. I wanna do the music videos that go with them, right? Oh, for it to idea. for it to release. Time. But you know, it, it I wanna bring back a cinematography to videos that they don't have anymore. Uh, yeah. Back in the day, remember when videos were like films, like thriller, and like stories. Yeah, yeah. they yeah. were like, yeah, they were full. And now it's kind of just like, yeah. cut random place, cut random place, cut random just place. Just girls yeah. shaking their butts and just kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so you, know, so you know what you're listening. He watches them all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a different way of doing it. But yeah, I definitely, like, <laughs> I, I definitely like uh, the storytelling, like thriller and. and and all those uh, older music videos. It's definitely very interesting. As a matter of fact, that's funny, you bring up Thriller. I've decided that when I get married again, like there is only one way that I'm gonna accept the proposal. And it's gonna be when the guy shows up like, and I'm like totally unexpected, right? And there's like a thriller flash mob that just happens like right in front of me. And then the dude comes out in a red jacket and starts doing the moose well, like in front of the flash mob. Hopefully he knows that. Huh? He will after he sees this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, the only way I'll say yes. <laughs> so the very first instrument you learned how to play was the accordion, right? Yes. The accordion. Yes. How did you get into that? My mom and dad really wanted me to like join a Los Bukis band. My dad, <laughs> my dad, like he tried so hard to get me into playing the accordion. Yeah. But I never picked it up. I never picked it up. So that's what it so was. That's like his it's, dream. Yeah. yeah my my <laughs> parents had the same dream. Yeah. They wanted to be all Tigres del Norte, Los Bukis. <laughs> we had a nice one. Didn't we? Yeah, we yeah, had a very nice accordion. Yeah. I just, I mean, I'm, I don't want to say that I don't like the sound of an accordion. But I, I don't like the sound of the accordion. I, I didn't enjoy it either until I saw Judy Tenuta in yeah. Word Out Yankovic. Yeah. And then I was like, I want to learn it more. But I didn't discover that till like way later. Yeah. And so when my parents sent me to accordion school, dude, it was torture. <laughs> like our teacher was all, he was older than dirt. You know what I mean? But he would jam out on that accordion, but you just wanted to fall asleep the way he would explain So you still know how to play it and stuff? Yeah, I still get down. Oh, I can get yeah. down. Oh. But it was all, now. I wish we had our accordion. I know, I know right? I did. <laughs> you can start playing first. Um, <laughs> I actually know how to do on the accordion. Do you remember Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you yeah. thought, yeah. like, <laughs> I figured it out on an accordion from Tijuana. Like, you know when you cross over and they have that accordion with the three buttons? Yeah. You ever seen that? I was like, if I can get down on this still, like, and I, but I, I'm actually talking to someone about getting a full on accordion so I can just do you, put it Do you back have any my... accordion in any of your songs? No, um, I, I do guitar. I do guitar. Yeah, you... And electric guitar, right? Electric guitar, acoustic guitar. I've been playing, uh, I've been playing the accordion. I was probably about, I think, 
11, 12 when I started. And then I went into guitar, and then I went into electric guitar, and then uh, I learned bass from the guitar as I went on. And then I didn't learn drums until I started sleeping with a drummer. There's something about when you sleep with a drummer that like really gets you like, I don't know, all in tune. <laughs> it's like driving stick shift, you know? <laughs> Never mind, totally wrong <laughs> reference. I'm before the children. Aiden's like, close your eyes, Adrian, close your eyes. He's just getting visuals now. <laughs> but um, I learned how to play drums actually. Um, crazy enough, uh, I played rock band. You guys remember rock yeah, band? Yeah, that's how you learned to play drums? I learned how to play drums on rock band because cool. of, and also sleeping with the drummer. So it was like a double course. <laughs> he taught you how to play drums. Yeah, I had taught me how to play drums, but it was the color coordination. I was really good at the color coordination, just knowing from the TV, like what to hit, because I was really good at video games. I grew up Wait, rock video band? Games. Wait, that, yeah, there that was, was, a, was a game called rock band. They had like the, you had the guitar and then you have the singing and then you, it's kind of like Guitar, guitar Hero. Hero. No, it's kind of like Guitar Hero, but it, like it encompasses the whole band. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, like the drumming, you actually kind of have to know how to play drums mm -hmm. in order to do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, when did that come out? A little bit after Guitar Hero, I think, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was like yeah. the second thing that came up after Guitar Hero was Rock Band. But you needed like a whole bunch of people. Yeah, to you come need, over yeah, you need like it. friends to actually play with it. Wow. Oh, well, that's why I didn't play with it. <laughs> 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 that explains it. That is, that's so funny. So, since you're involved in music and comedy, do you, do you uh, I know you're doing the parody and stuff, but on, on stage, do you ever do any sort of musical acts? In your comedy? Yeah, I like musical comedy. Uh -huh. um, in my comedy, I write songs about my exes. And I, and <laughs> I'm I sure they love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, the one that it's about, he actually did love it. Yeah, yeah he, loved, he loves my songs, but That's he can good. go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> I'm not bitter. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I write about him, and then now I'm writing about new experiences that I've had. And I think. Um, I think the beautiful thing about music and comedy is that a lot of people can relate to that and they love to laugh and they love to laugh at their exes. So that's that's the route that I usually like to go with my music. So when you first started getting on stage and, and doing your routines, uh, how, how did you get started? You just decided one day I'm going to go do some open mics? Uh, no, it was more of a... Um, so I was with this guy, right? Same guy that I write about. and. Um, you know, I just wasn't happy in the relationship and I was like, I need to go do something different. Like I was like, maybe I need to go back to school and, and, and figure something out. And I was like, looked up at like community college and it was like, oh, they have ballet. You know what I mean? Like I've always wanted to be a ballerina. So I was like, let me try. And so I joined, I sent in my $35 and they called me and they were like, uh, yeah, uh, did you sign up for ballet? I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, well, we're calling to tell you that we canceled the class because you're the only one that signed up. I was like, <laughs> So I was like, well, what else do you have that day? And uh, they ended up um, telling me Zumba or Intro to Stand-Up Comedy. And I was like, well, Intro to Stand-Up Comedy. And um, it was with a guy by the name of Adam Barnhart. He owns the Wee Comedy School or in Los Angeles, it's known as the Clown College. And it just... I just started going and it was like the place that I needed to be and I, I went there for many years. I worked with a lot of comics that came out of there. Tiffany Haddish came out of there. Um, um, Adam, um, God, what was Bar his name? Huh? Adam Barnhart. Adam Barnhart. Oh, Adam Barnhart's the one that runs the school, but he's, you know, he came out of there oh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tiffany Haddish, Tammy Jo Deeren. Like there's just so many comics that have come out of that, that place. And it's a cool place to always go back because there's always new students and you could always try out new material. Who are some of the, your favorite people that you've had a chance to work with? Uh, in the comedy world or, or entertainment world? Um, my favorite comedians, um, I love Felipe Esparza. I think Felipe Esparza is hilarious. He's so funny. Um, I love Fluffy, Gabriel Iglesias. Yeah. Like, oh, it's an honor, it's an honor to, to have worked with him. Yeah. And I, I worked with him in that sense. Is he, uh, is he funny in person as he is on stage? He's funny all, he's, yeah, he's, he's funny all the funny. time. I have the worst of the worst that you could imagine of going up, okay? So, it's a show, it's five guys and me. And Fluffy walks in, okay? And they've already given us the order and I'm supposed to go up second. All of a sudden they come and they tell me, uh, we're bumping you, we're gonna put Fluffy on before you. And I was like, okay, all right. So he went up completely murdered, right? And I went up there and I was just murdering after, I mean, cause I was calling out all the guys. I was like, you guys are a bunch of little bitches. How are you gonna put up the girl first? Like, uh. And so by that time there was other comics in the showroom 
And they were talking amongst themselves and then they were like, wow, Fluffy's really killing it. And they turned around and Fluffy was at the counter with Terry, with the owner. And they're like, oh my God, who's up? And they ran up to the window and it was me. And I was like, yay. And then, uh, and then I, I ended up uh, getting like a, you were great from Fluffy, which I completely loved. And you know, it just kind of gives you like, yeah, like I am, like I am funny. So it, it worked out. So never be scared to go up after someone that's amazing because that's your time to shine. Always think that way. Yeah. Good advice. Alrighty, well, Tanya and Shadow, it's very nice having you today. Yes, thanks for spending time with us. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I hope you get late. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you. Cool. <laughs> I hope so too. Alrighty, peace, guys. <laughs> See you guys. Hey, guys, thanks for watching The Camerana Show. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single episode.